Hello beautiful people. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. I want to provide you with an analogy for awakening today that might just be very useful for you. I love it because it's an analogy that is just very close to our own personal life. And of course, like all analogies, it has its limitations. It's not like you can map this analogy perfectly to the process of awakening. But nevertheless, I find that this analogy is a beautiful map to understand the unfolding or process of awakening to our true nature. So what is this analogy? Well, I want to explain how falling in love with someone is very much like awakening to your true nature. So how does that make sense? Well, What's the first step of falling in love with someone? Well, obviously, you first have to get to know them. You learn about their personal characteristics, their personality, what they look like, their past, their biography, their hobbies, their interests, their passions. All of that. You familiarize yourself with that person. And upon liking what you're experiencing, you begin to form this deep emotional bond and orientation towards this person, which we call falling in love. So how does this map to this first step of awakening? Well, we start out by not really being familiar with the nature of our true nature. So what is the first step? Well, we simply get to know ourselves we learn what the essential characteristics of our true nature are. We see that what we are is pure awakeness. It is always present in the here and now. It is always centerless and unbounded. And it is never separate from anything we are experiencing. It is the fabric or foundation of each and every experience but it's never limited or contained in any particular form. It is wide open like empty space. It includes everything without ever being separate from it. So we learn gradually that these are the fundamental characteristics of the awareness which we essentially are. And upon getting to know these qualities, we could say that we gradually appreciate them more and more and more, very much like this falling in love process in regular life. So going back to the analogy, what is the next step once you have familiarized yourself with that person? Well, what follows that usually is the full commitment to that person. You don't just like that person, but you want to be with them exclusively. You prioritize them. You say, I want to be with this person because I love them so much. And I want to express my love in my feelings, my actions, my thoughts, and everything I do. So there is this orientation towards that person, making them something primary in your life. And again, how can we map this to awakening to our true nature? Well, we might have a momentary glimpse of these beautiful characteristics I described earlier. But of course, that alone won't do. There is a kind of commitment that's needed. And again, it's not a commitment that feels like you're forcing something upon yourself. It's the commitment that arises naturally just because you love what you're experiencing so much. So because you recognize these beautiful characteristics of your true nature, this inherent freedom, you dedicate yourself to them. You return to them over and over again until it becomes more and more clear that this is what you essentially are, that this is your true home, this is where peace lies. And furthermore, there is a continuous process then of embodying these qualities of your true nature in conventional life. So there's both a process of stabilizing yourself in the recognition of these qualities, but also in expressing them in your doing. 
And again, that expression is something that flows out of this wide open awake freedom of your true nature. The analogy, of course, works in another beautiful way. Because like we all know, relationships can be very challenging. It's almost never the case that our love is just a perfect expression of wisdom. Very often it comes out in awkward ways, in fixations. A certain kind of darkness can be brought to the foreground of our experience. It can impede this expression of our love in the conventional realm. We might be deeply committed to the person we are with, but our thoughts, feelings, our emotions, our states of mind won't always reflect that. So gradually there's a kind of realigning of that. The body-mind becomes more and more accustomed with expressing the love that is inherent in it to its fullest wisdom. And likewise, when it comes to the embodiment of our true nature, it will never be the case that the expression is just pure wisdom from the get-go. Usually we have a lot of neurotic tendencies that are left over, fixations and contractions, which can seem to hide the beautiful qualities, the freedom of our true nature. And these get dropped and dissolved gradually. This is the gradual unfolding that happens in the context of this absolute wholeness and freedom which we have recognized. While nothing depends on it fundamentally, it still matters a lot in our conventional experience. But finally, of course, like all analogies, this analogy just breaks down. Because loving a person, being in a relationship, is always a kind of dualistic relation. Here am I, here are you, and I love you. That is the dualism that's inherent in it. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just how conventional reality works. However, when it comes to our own true nature, the love we experience in that realm is not one of dualism at all. The love that true nature has for itself is simply the love of it being itself. It is as intimate with itself as anything ever could be, simply because there's only itself. There's only true nature being itself. And the experience of being it is the recognition of it. And the recognition of it is peace and love. So if you find that, recognize it, sink into it, drop all effort and enjoy it. So I hope this exploration of how awakening relates to our experience of conventional love will be helpful to you. As always, apply that to your own experience. See if you have familiarized yourself with your true nature. If you have committed to it, to the recognition and embodiment of it. And see finally whether you have recognized that what you essentially are already is this totally awake freedom. And loving it is being it.